welcome to the channel in this video I shall be discussing about the Unix components the Unix operating system consists of three basic layers one is the kernel the second one is the shell and the third one is the file system apart from these three basic layers there is one more innermost layer called as a hardware if you just look at this diagram this diagram represents Unix system architecture and hardware is the innermost layer followed by your kernel shell and file system so let us discuss all these components one by one the first component is your hardware where all the physical components that are being connected to your computer system is what we call it as a hardware some of the examples that you can consider it as its CPU is a hardware component your main memory is a hardware component then your input output devices are the hardware component external memories are also considered as a hardware component or the physical components if any physical component that are being connected to your computer system is what we call it as a hardware so the other important component of your Unix operating system is kernel where your kernel is considered as the core of the operating system that contains the collection of programs and routine which is written in C program basically what happens is when a system is booted the kernel gets loaded into the memory by bootstrap program and directly communicates with your hardware components there are some of the functions of your kernel and some of those functions of your kernel are your file management process management and system calls so we shall discuss one by one so coming to the file management the task of your file management is just to manage the files related activities in Unix operating system every file or every input output devices is treated as a file and each input output devices has its own device drivers and these device drivers are stored in a directory called as forward slash dev so this is what we call it as a directory and the name of the directory is dev so whatever the input output devices that are being connected to your unix operating system it treats as a file and each of these input output devices has its own file called as a device drivers and they are usually stored in the file called as dev this is where we store all your device drivers so the next function of your kernel is process management where the primary task of your process management is to manage the memory management activities and also to manage the process relative activities at different stages like execution creation deletion of process scheduling the process and providing the mechanism for synchronization and establishing the communication as well as handling the deadlocks of a process so that's the other function of your kernel so the next uh, uh, process management also deals with some of the functions like process synchronization and uh, memory management then inter process communication and process scheduling where memory management module controls how the memory have to be allocated and your intercommunication is responsible for how a communication has to be established between two different process and when it comes to the processor schedule it allocates the CPU to the process so these are the fundamental functions of your process management which is taken care by your kernel the next part is your system call where your system calls are the set of function that can access the kernel the system calls basically includes the services to create the file begin the execution of program or open a logical network connection to another computer so that's the function of your system call where it is a set of function that can access the kernel and helps to create the file and it also helps to execution execute a program or to open a logical network connection to another 
computer. So, the next component of your Unix operating system is shell, where your shell acts as an interface between the user and kernel. As a part of it, the shell is a command line interpreter and when a user logs the computer, logs into the computer, he is always been identified by providing the username and password and then once it is been valid, the user will be able to run the program and hence your shell is called as a CLI, CLI stands for command line interpreter. We have four different types of shells available and those shells are bound shell, C shell, con shell and bound again shell which is also called as bash. So, let us discuss one by one. The first one is the bound shell. The bound shell is a standard shell and is available on Unix operating system which uses a command called as sh and it is being prompted with a dollar symbol. So, if I say if any your Unix operating system is prompted with a dollar symbol then we consider that as a bound shell and the command that what we use is sh and this is one of the oldest and most primitive uh, shell that what we have. So, the next shell what we have is C shell where the C shell it do not have the programming capabilities of bound shell, but it is still better for interactivity. It uses C S H as a command and C shell gets its name because of its programming language where it has been resembled with most of the syntaxes that what we use in your C program as well. So, it has been prompted see here your bound shell is been prompted with a dollar symbol and your C shell is been prompted with a percentage symbol. And the next shell that what we have is a corn shell where it has the programming capacity of both bound shell as well as the interactiveness of your C shell. It uses a command called as K S H. So, the next important shell that what we have is a bound again shell which is generally called as a bash shell. Most Linux operating system makes use of this bash as a default shell and this bash is basically a freeware shell and it executes the file using the command called as sh and it is also been prompted with a dollar symbol. If you find any of your Linux operating system with a prompting with a dollar symbol then it is a bound again shell or basically we call it as a bash which is being executed with the command called as sh. So, the next part that what we are going to discuss is the system utilities. What are this system utilities and what is this application program? The system utilities in a Unix operating system, it, it contains a large number of, number of utility and application programs like your editor and these utility programs and the applications are basically developed in Unix environment itself. Your system utilities are most powerful tools that performs a single task extremely well. So, you should remember that it can perform each of your system utilities are a powerful tool that can perform a single task and we have seen some of the these these just works like a commands and some of the system utilities that what we have is your editors like you can go ahead with ls. So, list vi is one of the system utility and uh, awk is one of the system utility and wc is word count is another system utility. Your system utility also includes a server program called as daemons what we generally called as daemons where this daemons refers to providing a remote network and administration services. So, your the other important system utility that what we can expect from your Unix is your daemons which includes a server program and which will provide a remote network and administration services. So, that is what you can expect from your system utility apart from your 
editors and apart from your AWK programs you can also expect the server programs like daemons which will help you to provide the remote network and administration services. The next part is your application program where your application programs are written by your system administrator or by the professional programs or the user that provide the extended capabilities to your system. So, you can develop any kind of your application program where that platform is given by your Unix operating system where your programs or your application can be developed either by the system administrator or it can be developed by the professional programmers. The last component of your Unix operating system is file system. Your file system is a major component and it is basically being organized in a tree format or generally what we call it as a hierarchical format. So, as we know that every hardware that is being included into your Unix is basically treated with a file and it may be a program or even it might be a file or it might be a directory or even it might be sub directory each of them is being resembled and it is being structured in a tree format starting with a root as a top this is how you have a file system so whatever the hardware components that are being connected to your system that is also treated as a file or it might be your program or it might be your ordinary file or even it might be a directory or even your file system may also contain some sub directory and everything is being hierarchically organized and the, the highest topmost position of your hierarchy is what we call it as a root. So, in the, in the next video I shall be discussing about the Unix session. Thank you.